Coming up on Network Africa, the Gambia's president, Adama Baru, appoints a woman as his deputy as speculations grow over reports that Yaya Jabe looted the state's treasury. The Nigerian government warns citizens against embarking on a trip to troubled Libya over alleged killings of black immigrants. And Algeria crashes out of the AFCON 2017 tournament in Gabon. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Timmy Tokwe Fagbemi. The Gambia's new president, Adama Baru, has appointed an influential woman as his vice president. 68-year-old Fatumata Jalit Banjang was once allied with his ousted predecessor, Yaya Jami, and then joined the winning coalition. She once served as the former authoritarian ruler's minister of health and social welfare, but was forced into exile after falling out with him. However, doubts have been raised over whether Fatumata Jalit Banjang qualifies for the post because of her age. The Gambia's constitution limits the vice president's age to 65. Mr. Jamil went into exile on Saturday after pressure from regional leaders and as Senegalese-led forces entered the Gambia threatening to capture him. Just how much wealth former Gambian leader Yahya Jame managed to take with him when he flew out of the capital Banjul and into exile late on Saturday is subject to speculation. While Mr. Jame left aboard a jet with Guinea President Alpha Conde, two other planes, a Mauritanian aircraft and a cargo plane from Chad, were being prepared for departure on the tarmac, fueling speculation over their purpose. President Barrow said on Sunday that it appeared his predecessor had looted state resources after his election defeat. Barrow's advisor, May Ahmed Fati, later told journalists that Jame had withdrawn $500 million in the past two weeks, adding that the Chadian cargo plane on the tarmac appeared to ferry some belongings of the former president. We are told it contained luxury goods, luxury expensive vehicles and other stuff. What you have done today, we understand that these luxury goods, transport, cars and others are, have not been fully, all of them have not been transported. There are still some who are at the airport. Uh, we have directed that whatever is at the airport will stay. On the streets of Banjo, residents are just happy to see the back of the man who'd ruled over Gambia for so long. However, a day after President Barrow said there was no money left in the state's coffers, his spokesman said the country's central bank is intact. There had been information to the public about the central bank. It was of particular concern. But the Inspector General of Police told me that everything is intact. They have spoken to the Governor and they really have no problem because they are working and the banks are working in the country. We have also been informed of some bit of administrative contradictions in terms of instructions given to certain ECOWAS uh, heads. It's not immediately clear if Mr. Barrow and his advisor had been referring to central bank funds or other state's resources. Well, let's get more on this story from the VOA's Katerina Hoyje, who joins us live from the Gambia's capital, Banjul. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. So what is the mood like in the Gambia at the moment after Yaya Jami's departure? Well, you can definitely notice that the mood has changed in the capital since Sunday evening when Yaya Jami flew out on Guinea President Alpha Condé's plane. People didn't immediately take to the streets to celebrate as they did, for example, after Adama Barrow was sworn in the President Black Car. Uh, a majority of people might not have a fond memory of Jammer's time in power, but they still want to show some respect to the former leader and his supporters by not celebrating his departure while West African forces are waiting at the country's borders. 
Uh, two days ago, the population shared a sense of troops arrived in Banjul. Uh, the area around the presidential palace and the state house was opened up after, after the arrival of foreign troops. And people took advantage of visiting areas that they have not dared to, to go in, in years. But that said, many people here are also sad to see Yaman leave in his home village of Kerilai, for example. People saw him as a kind leader, that he gave them money. Uh, people in the village worked on his farm, and they are definitely not happy to see Yaman go the way he needed. Now, there are conflicting reports that over $11 million is missing from the state coffers after Yaya Jami's departure. What more can you tell us about that? Uh, well, an advisor to Adama Baru did say that Yaya Yama sold millions of dollars in his final weeks in power. Uh, we have all seen the, the shipment of the cars and several containers at the airport, which uh, was later stopped. Uh, another advisor, President Adama Baru, uh, has also said that, that later that uh, the, the doubts around these claims of theft. Uh, he also hinted that the state coffers might have been emptied by people around uh, Yaya Yama. Police officers are now investigating uh, who these shipments were meant for and who, who actually sent them to the airport. Uh, but with that said, Adama Barrow is definitely taking over an invitation that has been emptied by Yama and his uh, supporters for years. Now, Katarina, we're also getting reports that relief is gradually turning into anger in the Gambia over the soft landing Yaya Jami received. How true is this? Are any group of people calling for his persecution? Definitely, people who, who they want justice, they want to know what, what happened during Jama's time in power. But then the power has announced that he will form a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to go to the bottom of the alleged abuses. Uh, people have expressed that they want justice, but finding out what actually took place during Jama's rule will obviously take years uh, before we have any answers. It's also the importance of actually reconciling between Yama supporters and those who are in favor of Mr. Adama Barrow, and also between different ethnic groups before just he, he made the hostile comments towards the ethnic group in, in Gambia.